Hi, welcome to the Sacred You podcast. I'm Rachel Goodwin and I'm a channel and healer who loves to teach and empower others. I offer a look at spirituality in fresh and new ways and you can see more of my work at my website at rachelgoodwin.dk and the classes and sessions that I do. Ahu hei a vale ana hoi e kahali ko puha ko kui kui ahu ka nai a kahapu ko moni nei pihi ko i kahi mana ho i kahapi li. Today we have an interview with Mary Farrell Tobin. She's a priestess in the Order of the Blue Rose and describes herself as an emissary for the Order of Melchizedek, the Magdalens and a voice for many aspects of the Divine Mother. Mary is a trance channel. She leads retreats and activates and attunes, initiates to the divine feminine within them. She's also written a book, The Magdalene, Temple of the Divine Feminine, which she channeled and is a light transmission. I'm so happy that Mary could join us today. She has a beautiful energy and I was so pleased when she said yes to this interview. It's very special and I'm really grateful to Mary for coming along and sharing her words and her wonderful energy. Um, There's a really special meditation, guidance, channeling that she leads us in at the end. I know you're really going to enjoy this one. So big thanks to Mary. Lots of blessings, everyone. Enjoy. So welcome everyone to another episode of Sacred You and today we have with us the lovely Mary Tobin. Welcome Mary. Hi, how is everyone? I was going to say good morning but it's not good morning for everyone. (laughs) No, it could be good morning, good day, good evening, good night, you just never know. (laughs) Right. (laughs) It is, it is actually really global this podcast. I think 50% of the people are from the United States And then some from the UK, some from Denmark. And then the list of countries just go down and down and down, like 1%. Like there's just so many countries. It's like Mm. really, and they make up like like the rest of it. So it's like, it is a really, really global podcast. So yeah, so hello to everybody all around the world. Oh, beautiful. So we're going to talk to Mary today and hear a little bit about her. And her work. So perhaps we could start there, Mary. Do you want to just, I'd really love to hear about like who you are really. And I'd love to know where you were born and where you grew up, a bit about your childhood maybe. Sure, sure. I grew up in New York, in the United States, in New York, uh, on Eastern Long Island uh, in a beach town. Um, I, growing up, I grew up Catholic raised uh, going to church and all of that. I, in connection with all of the work that I do now, I was always very spiritual and very um, connected, very, had a lot of uh, sense of knowing, intuitiveness. But all of this was never even on my radar. I didn't even know that people could talk to angels or that, um, any of energy. I didn't know anything about energy. It just was just kind of a very sheltered um, 
life growing up. But I, at the same time, I did have this connection. I'd have dreams. I'd have um, constant conversations with, I was very connected with the Blessed Mother. Um, so I think probably if you ask my classmates, they'd say I was a little different. I was very quiet, very, very quiet, but um, just kind of a little, you know, to herself, just different. I had different interests. Everybody, um, I mean, I enjoy, love being with people, but I like to go off by myself a lot. Um, but a very normal growing up. Um, I went to college. I did know intuitively that I was supposed to help people communicate. So I became a speech pathologist. Um, I just remember having that very conscious thought. I, I'm supposed to help people communicate. I don't want people to feel alone. And then I found that um, that degree and thought I'll, I'll help people communicate that way. So what, um, did, what did you say you were? A speech, speech pathologist. pathologist. What does yeah. that, what's that then? So speech pathologist, um, we, there's so much. You help people with, well, I work with children with language de development. Um, so you could work with children who are hearing impaired or adults who are hearing impaired, helping them to communicate, to speak. Um, but it also deals with, you know, adults who've had um, strokes and mm. eating. Uh, just um, it depends what avenue you go down. But I worked with children and helping them um, to speak and language processing, understanding things. So, um, and I loved it. I, I was good at it. I loved it. Um, as I, when I got married and I moved um, out of, from New York, big move to New Jersey, which wasn't really that far. Uh, I, um, whatever inspired me, you know, I think just divine timing. I was, didn't really know anyone in New Jersey. So I started, um, I had my first child and I just started meditating. Um, I was a little anxious just being a new mom and feeling a little alone. So I started meditating and um, just had all these mystical, that's when things started to open for me. I had all these mystical experiences. I would smell roses and um, feel a communication from the Blessed Mother, um, feel a calling that I was, there was something I was supposed to be do, doing to help people. And at that point, I was still working as a speech pathologist. I was working um, with infant children. And um, I really just started to open uh, during that period of time. I think I just had so much time alone. So while other, other mothers, you know, when their children napped, <laughs> I don't know what, what they did, maybe they napped or what, I was meditating. And then um, I somebody mentioned the word Reiki to me. And... Uh, I just was, it was like that knowing again, just that word. I didn't know how to spell it. I didn't know what it was, but I just said, oh, I think I'm supposed to do that. And I, that person was telling, who was telling me about it didn't really know that much about it. So then I was on a mission um, to find out about it. And just synchronistically in my, uh, I got a newsletter from, you know, for speech pathologists, monthly newsletter and in it, this woman had advertised for Reiki. And she told me later, she never had advertised before and she never did again. It was just that one newsletter. <laughs> and I saw it and I said, that's how you spell it. I think that's it. I think I'm going to take a class. And I did. And so then everything really started to open up for me then. And, uh, you know, I, I continue to have children. I have four children now. Yeah, um, so how, how long ago was that? So that was... Um, so it was like 95, 1995. Um, yeah, so the 90s. So I, the whole, um, from 95 through like 2001 or so, I studied healing work, um, Reiki, angelic healing, and uh, became a Reiki master. So that's why I laugh. I, you know, all these other moms, of course, now they're all coming to see me. <laughs> but at the time, they're doing making cupcakes for their kids at school. And I, I was doing Reiki when my kids were napping and my kids would go to school and talk about what I did too. So it was always, I was always very, um, I walked that, the, the line between the two worlds because I didn't want my children to feel um, like their mom was too different, you know, and uh, I wanted them to, you know, 
feel like, and they were, and they were very much, um, it, but it, it was part of their world, the, the energy work of the healing world, um, all the alternative modalities I introduced them to. And it's so as adults now, I think they're very grateful for that. I know they are. They're all, they're very much, it's very much a part of them. But um, yeah, so that's kind of, that was the beginning of my journey. I wasn't at that time, um, I would see things, I would maybe hear a word. Um, you know, I was just opening up to all the realms to um, really moving beyond religion and into the spiritual uh, aspects of who I was and um, just learning so much about um, all the different dimensions, um, uh, goddesses, all of that. But I didn't really, wasn't clairaudient. I wouldn't have considered myself clairaudient at that time until about 2000. Um, I was good by the birth of my last child. It's about 2003. Uh, but I will say I did would hear a word once in a while and I would hear the word I heard was Mikhail Zadak. What her paradigm shift, Mikhail Zadak. And I heard when I heard Mikhail Zadak, I was like, oh, I know that. Why do I know that word? I it was like a familiar, just a remembering. But I couldn't, you know, and I researched, but I I just knew I knew it. Um, and I remember I had ended up having three boys and a girl, wanting to, whenever I tried to pick out a girl's name, I had different forms of Mary, and then I kept coming up with this name, and I was like, Madeline. No, not Madeline. I kept wanting to come up with this name and it was never sounded right. Of course, now I realize, only recently did I realize it's Magdalene. I was trying to come up with Magdalene, but I couldn't quite get it. And, um, and I would always see this bluish purple light around me, um, which is now I know that is how she appears to me as an indigo blue light, um, like a, a geometric form of tower of light. Um, but, uh, in 2003, I was meditating one day and my guides, I, I heard, heard a full on, um, male voice speaking to me in full conversation. Um, I could almost like verbatim repeat what he said to me at the time. He said to me, uh, uh, you are, a, you are a child of God, or my one guide said, you were a child of God. Um, transmutation of form is possible. And they started showing me like strings of light and all of, um, and just speaking to me about being an emissary of light and, um, and who I was. And they just went on and on. And I was terrified, not terrified. My heart was pounding. I remember, but being so excited, just so happy. And, you know, and, and they, for like an entire year, they spent, it was my guides. Um, and then they introduced me to more fully to Archangel Michael and Archangel Raphael. They spent a year teaching me, um, just speaking to me, talking to me about my diet. They asked me not to eat uh, animal or animal byproducts. They gave me specific vitamins to take. And, um, just started preparing me for, I didn't even really understand at the time what it was I was being prepared for, but uh, it was a very, very transformational time. And it was at that time that I said to my husband, um, I'm being called to this work and I'm not going to work anymore as a speech pathologist. That this is my calling. And he, he was like, kind of shrugged his shoulders and was like, well, I kind of expected it. <laughs> Yeah, you've been going down this road for so long. He said, I, I'd be surprised if you didn't. So um, so then, yeah, then one day they said, okay, you're, you're not that the teaching was complete. It's still, it's always ongoing, but they said, uh, now tell them, tell them, tell them what you do, be a voice and, and begin. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of that. So, yeah. It sounds like a, a very gentle, like gradual journey. 
It was. So that even though, like, all the time you were getting closer to the top of the mountain, you wouldn't yes. have really notice because they were just, like, yeah, doing it, was, it bit by bit by bit. It was really – and looking back on it, you know, well, of course, um, you know, I was having children. I was having uh, four children. One of them has special needs. I was going through a lot of things at the time. So it's what I – It's always been, it always is, right? Exactly what you need at the rate that you need it to happen. There was a lot of shifts that had happened for me because I was so, because I was so um, connected to Jesus and connected to the Blessed Mother, I was so um, indoctrinated. I don't mean any offense to anyone who's who's, um, Catholic or um, very close closely tied to their religion, but, but my belief system was so, I didn't know what I didn't know. So they had to take a lot of time for me to really, um, to shift and to open, to expand more. Um, so it, it, it was, it was, uh, I look back on it and I go, did that really happen? I can't. And I listened to my friends talk about what they were doing during those years. And I think, wow. You know, this is, that wasn't me, <laughs> but I'm so grateful for it. I'm so grateful for the journey and, and where I am now. Um, as a, because I, after that, I slowly started leading guided meditations and, um, you know, I would hear messages and I was introduced to really all the goddesses started coming to me and speaking to me, but I would just simply tell people what I heard, you know, I would lead a meditation and I'd hear the message and I would give it to them. And, but there was a point where it shifted and I became a full channel and was able, that was a let a real letting go mm-hmm. of allowing that to just move through me and trusting in the voice that was coming through. Um, but Mary Magdalene was the, was the last <laughs> of the divine feminine to come through for me. It was like, everything was leading to her. Um, so where yeah. where you are at the moment? I mean, do you have a sense of of why this happened to you? I mean, you don't have to reveal anything that's that's personal to you, but you know, mm-hmm. why why has your life gone gone this way and where you are now? I mean, I guess I'm sort of asking, you know, what's behind it all? Well, I I understand now that um, that I've done this work before in other lifetimes. Um, that I, as they tell me every day, you volunteered for this, you've mul- volunteered for multiple roles. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, and I've had memories of now of, of lifetimes where I've done this work. I've been an oracle in Greece, I've, you know, done, been a healer in Ireland. I've done different, um, I've had different roles in different lifetimes, but I've always, uh, not not every single lifetime, but I've done this work before, but very specifically um, in the lifetime with Mary Magdalene, that I was one of her um, followers. And, uh, you know, and I, in that lifetime, I promised her I would do this. And many of your listeners, Really, I would say all of your listeners, because she was speaking to me before this podcast, uh, have also agreed to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that their roles. Yeah, we've all. Yeah, it's all just waiting to wake up, or maybe it's already w- woken up in them. But I found I found out recently. You know, I did one of these um, DNA tests, mm. and I found out I have because I knew I had Irish ancestry, but I'm thirty five percent Irish. <laughs> 19% Scottish. Oh. And, uh, if I remember the numbers it correctly, 49% English. <laughs> wow. And I was I was surprised I was that much Irish. Th- that much Irish, I, yeah. Yeah, as far as I knew, it, they, were, they were grandparents, but I think they were maybe on both sides of my mum's family. But um, it's interesting you said about that Irish healer thing. I, well, I'm about... I'm 90 something percent Irish, but okay. um, I always thought, and then I have a little bit of Welsh, but what was interesting to me is because um, I've been pushed to go to Scotland and um, 
I also have one of my guides is a, what would I call him? He's like a, like, he's like a, he's got a, like a kilt. He's like a, but he's like a knight. Okay. I, he's a, he's a, some kind of a knight, but he's Scottish. <laughs> and I just found out I did the DNA that actually they updated the DNA. I guess they keep getting more information and they updated my, and I was like 20 something percent. That doesn't work out percentage wise, but I was significantly Scott, more Scottish. I was no, I had no Scottish the first time I did it. And all of a sudden I had Scottish. So I thought that was very interesting too. Yeah, that's it. They're, they're getting better at pinpointing where people's mm. DNA is wrong. But that's why I thought that when you said about the Irish here, I thought, oh, I want to ask her if she's got Irish ancestry because there's something in the face that looks Irish to yeah, me yeah. About, about, about you. When I've got two children, and my, my eldest one, Josh, he was born in 2002. And after he was born, when he was a little baby, I just had this Irish voice going round my head all the time. And because I was a psychiatric nurse um, until about 2000, and I was like, either I'm having puerperal psychosis or (laughs) (laughs) Josh has brought in an Irish spirit guide with him. And I I had visions of him. I've never told him this because Josh, he's really normal. You know, he plays football Mm -hmm. and he just like, he laughs about me, but he doesn't want to know about any of it. Yeah. And, um, I saw him like in a cloak and like he was like my teacher and we were living in, we were living in Ireland. And then a few years ago, I went on a trip with a friend to Ireland to, um, uh, I I can't remember what County Dublin is in, but it was, Mm -hmm. it was around where, um, I'm really bad at recalling things. There's three. There's three like burial mounds that are really, really significant. And the one that looks like the oh, spaceship. Newgrange, Newgrange. Yeah, so there's Newgrange. Yes. And then there's two others. And we went and did some work with one of the others that's really damaged. And mm. but but the whole trip, just Sarah was coming in so strong, and I was like, oh, she's linked to Ireland. She's linked to Ireland. I really wasn't expecting mm. that. You know, and she yeah. never sort of said why or anything, but yeah. she was very much, very much there. But she's had a life there or something. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, I went to New Grange, and actually, we're going back. Um, yeah, you know, I went with family. I have family. My family is in um, the north there, but right by the New Grange. Oh. But um, I'm going. I was supposed to go last year on a sacred tour. I was supposed to help lead it. Well, my one friend's leading it and she asked me to do some channeling and do some work with the group. So we're supposed to go last fall and now we're going this fall. Maybe I got, I mean, they're still in lockdown. Are are you still in lockdown? (laughs) They're still like, I think they can't really move about in Ireland. Well, I mean, I'm in Denmark, so um, I do, I do sort of keep up with things and they are, I I don't know about Ireland though. They're different, but I know in the UK they're 50% vaccinated now so things are my eldest son lives there with his dad and Mm. his life you know more or less within like covid world has gone back to normal to a great or lesser extent oh that's good to hear yeah but Um, i think i think different places like if it if they have more things more cases and they close down and so it's like different from district to district you don't know yeah so I don't know if we're going but we are supposed to go to Newgrange and uh, I really wanted to go I think they've been working on it or something but I really wanted to go to those two other ones um and I think that's what we're doing and now yes I'll talk to you about it I'll talk to you about it when we when we finish recording because it's quite a long story but it's Mm. really interesting one of them has this story of like the evil sister that did all lots of terrible stuff and and that particular one got pillaged and blown up with gunpowder and it has it's very damaged it's very damaged energetically and everything mm. um but they're they're very significant so significant those three i love those spirals in newgrange i was mesmerized by the yes. energy coming out of that and then they were like that's it your five minutes are up you have to come out now and i was like no, <laughs> I know. I, I, there, there must be a way. I've heard of people um, being able to get private groups in there, <laughs> just so you can okay. spend some more time in there. Yeah. Um, my cousin's one of her good friends her, runs it, so I'm, I'm gonna pull in some, <laughs> see if I can get a, a special uh, opportunity to get in there. I don't know. Um, that would be amazing if you could, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean. 
Yeah. Because there's anyway. a lot of people they take in there at a time. So to have, you know, yeah. more private space, it just is so goddess energy in there. It's just so mm -hmm. magical. Well, Void it's, uh, all and one of the, um, one of the uh, goddesses I work with is Brigitte. She was one of the first ones I came in that came into me and she was the one who pushed me. She kept saying like it was hers, like all those, especially New Grange. She would say, so I, I, um, and I would sit with, you know, listening to or reading about New Grange, what it was all about. And of course they never mention anything. Up, they just speculate on how old it is and all that. Yeah. But I feel that maybe, I don't know I, if Brigitte is really, um, uh, a, a star being, you know, who came, you know, was part of the building of it. And, um, and that's what she means that she was part of. And of course, Brigitte, I think in Ireland is probably the same as Isis and, mm. you know, they have different names. I don't know, mm. but, um, but she always could, will talk about New Grange as if it's hers. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah. She's a good person to call on with working with energies up there, I imagine. I love yeah. I love her energy. I love it so much. Do you? Up, people don't. Yeah, yeah people I don't went up to her. Iona. I went up to Iona oh. with a group of priestesses some 2014, that was. And they, they all, there's a lot of mythology and beautiful stories about her up there. Oh. Iona's just a tiny little postage stamp of an island. I don't know if you've heard of it. Just I've heard of it. Yeah. Recreation yeah. of it here that I go to. Oh, uh, I have a friend, yeah, yeah, in, that, that does that as well. She told me. She told me about it, and I was like, oh, that's just incredible. Column it's Seal, just... Column Seal Park, I think it's called. I um, Oh, so that's that's interesting. But it's interesting that you love her. And I, when I started channeling her, I um, I had people get up and leave. <laughs> Because she's so powerful. Oh, okay. like oh, or they okay. call me beforehand. Who do you think's coming through today, Mary? Because if that brigade's come, I can't. She, I feel like a math truck ran over me. I'm like, well, she's going to make things happen in your life. She helps you overcome. She helps you just step into your power, your who you are, all of that. But some people, after a while, they got they got used to her but yeah no I love well, I love that like that, that fire energy the energy yeah. of the forge let's get in there and like yeah. melt stuff and bang yeah, it and like whoa it. yeah you know, I love that. Like, <laughs> they wanted they wanted the blessed mother <laughs> just nice and gentle like it's not all the gen all the blessed mother we we're, we got power we got we gotta we're warriors here <laughs> but that's funny but your energy is is beautifully gentle. I think, like you've got a calmness about you that I think I probably don't possess. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? Oh no! I, I I people always say that it you know it's, I always present that way. I do. I know why my energies are much more aligned with um, like a blessed mother, a Kuan Yin energy, but. Um, but I definitely have some of that Mag Mary Magdalene's. Yeah. She's a tough one too. Um, yeah. But you definitely don't, you, you have a beautiful, calm, loving energy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the loving bit, I can understand. Yeah. The calm. Yeah. Maybe that's some of the energy, like angelic <laughs> energy around me or something. I'm not sure that's mine. It's like, yeah. I'm always looking for you know, it. You know, you have a lot of wisdom. It feels like a lot, just a lot of wisdom. Oh. That comes that emanates from you, yeah. Oh, thank just you. Like a, yeah, I'm definitely moving into my crone years now, and yeah. I'm really getting into it. I love this whole thing of like being a wise old crone. I'm like, I've been waiting for this all my yeah. life. <laughs> well, I feel like I feel like with this podcast and just this past, you know, this whole lockdown period, I I wasn't able to, uh, except for the the live broadcast I did. I wasn't really able to work much because I do have that one son that special needs and all his programs shut down. Um, and first I was frustrated, but they kept saying to me, you know, this is your time. We need to work with you. And I, I see now, like I am stepping into my crone years, like this is, and I feel like in today's what the full moon. Um, so they, maybe this is the ending. And then I, I, I in meditation, just in preparation for this too, just, Stepping more into my voice, speaking who I am and sharing the wisdom. I, I find that I use it as a crutch, the channeling sometimes. Like I'll just step into the channeling 
and um, trust in that. But me as me speaking, I have to step more into just who I am and the, the wisdom. They call it the wisdom years, Rachel. <laughs> I like that. We're the the wise ones. I don't like the crone. <laughs> I like I like that crone. I like the crone thing. You do? Think, okay. Yeah, yeah. I sort of embrace it fully. Okay. I think it's had a lot of a bad press, that word. Okay. And also because like the Scandinavian, the Old Norse is a completely different culture okay. around it. And I just like, yeah. <laughs> okay well I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna start start embodying and <laughs> opening myself to all of it yeah. um yeah but it is you do feel that right you know because you've so you've been on this journey a long time too right it's just kind of like you know like I was saying talking to women who raised children with me and now are coming to me you know trying to figure out who they are and what their life's direction and is, is and everything and I I just sit and go, you know, it was so, it was some ways it was so hard. Some of the things that we went through, but I'm so grateful that I, uh, you know, I lined myself and, and did said yes, that I said yes. <laughs> right. And that we continued to say yes to who we were because I'm so much more comfortable in who I am now. And just yeah, like, yeah. I can't wait. I just can't wait. I don't know what it is, but I can't wait for it. Whatever it is, <laughs> this next part. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's it. I wouldn't describe it as an easy path, my life, but mm -hmm. it's really been interesting. <laughs> yeah. In yeah. a good way, you know, because yeah. I can't stand being bored. And the things that yeah. I've found out and discovered about myself and about the world and Yes. Like I see the world I was brought up in, you know, as a child, I was desperately looking for things that I couldn't find, mm -hmm. you know, like the goddess, the divine feminine, the elementals. Mm -hmm. I used to I used to go down the end of the garden and look for fairies. Where are the fairies? I, you know, yes. I was expecting to see them. I tried to get into Narnia through uh, we had a cupboard under the stairs I couldn't get into Narnia oh, those are I, my favorite books <laughs> Narnia yeah I, I knew stuff should be happening and of course yeah. now I know how to do all those things but in another way of mm. course you know I expected them to happen physically when I was like five and right. seven but I just wish there'd been a me I mean I do go back and have conversations with my my inner child but I wish I'd had a mad auntie or somebody to tell me these things because I didn't I know it's true. Well, when I was talking about my childhood, you know, I was unaware, but at the same time I was doing, I remember going to Ireland when I was five and looking for the fairies and just, you know, I just believed in things so strongly. And even, even the, the Bible stories I would listen to, but like for me, like it was also, it was just real, 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 you know, like, um, and then I'd always have those thoughts too, like, um, as I got older, like, I really, I think I just want to go home, but not like, you know, the, what you hear people talking about now, like it's that knowingness of, of what home is and where it is. And uh, just, but yeah, just always the, the mystical. I love the Narnia books and the Tolkien books and um, the magical. Just I read that. and reread those, those Narnia books over and over <laughs> yeah. again. I mean, and now they have so many, the children today, there's so many books that, uh, a Wrinkle in Time. That was my one of my favorite books. I was a little older, but just traveling, you know, through time and space. And it's funny because the work that I do, not to jump ahead, but the work I do now with um, the Magdalene and the Order of the Blue Rose, she calls it um, whenever it's time for a new retreat, you know, we're, we're sent to a certain area. It's very specific where we need to go. And she'll say, oh, the Wrinkle in Time one, because we, um, she'll call it that, like she'll use different expressions because we, we are shifting the timelines. We're moving into the, the time periods that uh, the darkness entered it, you know, the dominating structures and shifting, clearing, shifting and shifting the timelines. But, but she uses that because that was one of my favorite stories. I just watched the movie recently and I just, I love all that. I don't understand it. <laughs> but I love it. Oh, I don't think I know that one. I'm going to look. Oh, that one on time. Yeah. Oh, it's Madeline Langle, L 
E N G L E. And, um, and you know, what's funny to me too, is all three of those authors as a, they wrote children's books, but then they have these spiritual books for the adult. Like as a child, I didn't realize that it was all symbolic of the spiritual journey and all of that, the different realms, the different dimensions. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I would love to hear um, you speak on the Order of the Blue Rose. I've only actually discovered this whole Blue Rose thing quite recently because even though I've been working with Sarah for years I've been quite isolated in a way Mm -hmm. because during that time I've left a relationship moved country got really ill um, got married to a Danish guy and had a special needs son as well so I had not had a lot of time oh no (laughs) to explore the blue rose (laughs) you know I just like done my bit and then try to cope with life and you know I don't I don't have time really to research and mm-hmm. sit and read everything and you know so well, there's really not much to read on the blue rose no no exactly um yeah you know so when the Magdalene started speaking to me um you she worked with me for a while um they just I, I, I'm trying to remember yeah, she worked with me for a while before she introduced me to the Blue Rose, the Order of the Blue Rose and all of that. Um, but when she, and I'm trying to remember when she would, when she, oh, you know what it was? She said to me, you need to create a new website. You know, when I started working more with the Divine Feminine and her specifically, and she said, call it the Blue Rose, call it the Blue. And I was like, the Blue Rose. Okay. I mean, I loved it but I didn't understand it, but I did it. Um, And then of course I'm attracting people who are exploring the blue rose, but I myself don't, didn't even know what the blue rose was. Um, So it's been like, and, and then even when you explore it, you'll find you get the Essenes are connected to the order of the blue rose. You'll get, um, you get Mary Magdalene, but you don't, I, I haven't um, now I'm starting to find a little bit more. Every once in a while I'll start to look again. But um, I realized after a while, I was like, well, maybe I'm supposed to be the resource for the order. <laughs> maybe I'm the one who's supposed to give the information. So I did like, a, a, I started using my channeling. They're asking me to write more. And um, I just sat down and said, so what is the order of the, what, what is this? Why, why the blue rose? And I got all this information from, I spoke about Mikhilzadek earlier. So they're the ones who worked with me and, besides my guides in the beginning, the order of Mikhilzadek. So they're an, an overseer, part of the Brotherhood of Light, an overseeing body, um, come from other dimensions, other star systems, um, and have helped to develop the mystery schools um, on the earth and um, established these lineages of, of light workers. And what came through was that the blue rose grew on Venus, that there was an order of the blue rose on the planet Venus. So the connection with Venus, um, when I do the retreats, I actually work with Aphrodite, not Venus, but um, of course she's the same entity. But um, that through the order of Mikhilzadek, this order of the blue rose uh, uh, are, were beings of, light um, that work with this indigo, it's like an indigo blue, it's not a blue, 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 an indigo blue, um, that's a, the signature of, that you are of that lineage, you carry that light. Um, I don't even know why I just said that because I she's never really told me that, but she, her, Magdalene comes in with as that indigo blue light. But of course the rose is the heart and they'll always talk to me about the rose as the five petaled rose. Um, this work now is about the fifth dimension, entering the fifth dimension of compassion and um, unconditional love. Uh, but it's a, a lineage that has come through, through incarnations, through into Avalon, the Essenes, um, you know, times of darkness on the earth to help establish um, initially through. Um, Atlantis establishing the light grids on the earth and the, the, um, 
they're healers, but for me specifically, the work has been earthwork. So I don't know if other people have experienced who are part of the Order of the Blue Rose um, who are doing more specific um, healing work, but for me, it's healing work of the earth to establish the light grids on the earth and um, and um, to clear the darkness. So you're already doing that work. <laughs> you've you've you're so many of your listeners are are already being called to go for a walk in the woods and then have to sit down and do a clearing in a certain area and then anchor in light. That's the work of the Order of the Blue Rose. That's um, the work that the Magdalene, I believe, you know, in that first book that she gave me, um, the story, um, the Magdalene Temple of the Divine Feminine, she talks a little bit about the grid systems on the earth and um, the uh, the awareness of the Essenes. Um, well, those at Quam Ram, she never calls them the Essenes, but of, of the earth's grid systems and where to stay away from on the earth, where to garden away from fault lines. And, um, and then she talks about the dark seeds planted in the earth and um, that those, uh, that we're those who are reading her, her story and those who are called to work with her um, know are, um, are implanted with the ability to help to clear and to, to wake up now and to rise and to clear these dark seeds, she calls them the dark seeds. So, um, so the blue rose is the indigo blue light, the wisdom, the knowing, the, um, the heart, the unconditional love of the heart, but it's that lineage. And it's, so it's part of the lineage of the rose and there's the white rose and there's so many different lineages but, um, and I don't know them all, the specific, I may know them, but I don't know specifically um, what each of their roles are. But I do know for the Order of the Blue Rose, the work is earth work, the work that I've been called to lead in anyway. So, That's just wonderful. I just yeah. love, I love hearing this because I was always called to do earth work. You know, I started off doing mm -hmm. Reiki. Um, but, but I found, you know, years ago after my mum died, that was sort of like what set off my spiritual path. I found that I could mm. sense her and even though I denied all these things all my life because I was very, well, I've been brought up to be very rationalistic. Um, mm. I couldn't really deny my mum was there because I loved her too much to sort mm. of put that away. And then I learned healing. And well, I read a book and I could do healing. And then I did Reiki because it helped me get insurance you can't practice in the UK without insurance uh, so, okay. <laughs> so um uh, but then then I I over it took me years to realize I was reading energies on the landscape that I can read energies on the landscape and I can go to a sacred place and say that bit needs work that bit that's where it's really happening and it's quite often not where people think it is mm -hmm. could be because I work so much with the divine feminine but it's usually happening somewhere more quietly to the side rather than the big sort of look at me, look at me bit mm -hmm. that everybody thinks where it's it's all happening. And then so I sort of really specialised in earth healing work. And then when I came to Roskilo in Denmark, where we live now in 2014, I was so confused. I was like, I do Sarah stuff. I do earth healing stuff. I work with springs. I work with that. How do all these things fit together? I could not work it out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's sort of come together for me over the years. And like you saying all this, it's just like. Yeah. And do you, uh, do you speak light language? Do you do toning or any of that? I do. I've just started mm -hmm. to in the last year. Because that's part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I do the retreats, so the, the first level is, um, well, we always have gatherings of 12, but it, it is um, working with the earth. And um, and there are specific, you know, we're doing the work individually, but then these, there's a reason why she has these groups of 12 where we do um, create like an like energetic structure, like a, a pyramid of, of light on these specific areas. But the second level is... Um, about using our voices, how important it is um, to use our voices. The uh, 
the Order of Melchizedek, Melchizedek, when he was channeling to me the Order of the Blue Rose, he said they they sang and they danced in the mountains and they they um, brought the light and they and uh, so it's it's but it's toning, it's using our voices, our light language, um, whatever, however it's coming through. Mm. But the very power of that in the the weaving of light on the mm. earth, you know, it's the codes, codes of light. Mm. But so, when I read, yeah. I read, I read the channeling you have on your website, the Melchizedek, the Order of the Blue Rose, and the Magdalene lineage, and that solved a mystery for me. So I was so glad that I came across it because last last year I went out for a walk in the evening in the dark, which doesn't happen that often because usually by that time I'm too worn out <laughs> to go out. But off I went, and I could see Venus like burning really, really brightly. And I was just walking along and Venus was just in my sight all the time. And I was just so captivated by this energy. And like we live opposite a park that has different natural springs in it. And there's so many activation points in Roskila where I live. I called it an ascension grid. And it's still kind of developing and growing, but it's nearly ready to come online. And I went and stood on this, I've made like, with working with Sarah, I've made like this violet flame temple that clears the landscape by itself. It does it like 24 hours a day because there's a lot of clearing that needs doing around here. Mm. But, um, and then there was this point I walked along, there was a point where they'd moved a bench, but it had a lot of stone underneath, like old stone. And these places, they often like, you know, they magnetize the energies that are flowing through. And I stood on it. I thought I, I had to, you know, because my body just says, right, do this, do that. And it just, my body just goes walking off by itself. And I stood on these stones and I looked at Venus and I was like, oh, these stones have the Venus energy in it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I didn't know why. I was like, Venus, it's all about Venus. Mm -hmm. why is it all about Venus <laughs> and I looked oh so that last... happened before you read yeah this is oh, last year yeah. and I couldn't yeah. I looked and I looked and I couldn't find anything online and the only thing I could remember was that years ago I read oh it's what oh is it the guy who wrote the lion the witch and the wardrobe he wrote some science fiction I'm sure I remember reading one and he said Jesus was from Venus and I was thinking there must be some he it was a he wrote some science yeah, fiction stories Lewis, for adults. Right. Yeah, C.S. Lewis. That. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was it. And and I was thinking, oh, there must be some. And then I read I read that channeling you wrote, and I was like, oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> now it all makes sense. But there's something about the blue rose that people just relate to on a deeper level, and it's like you see the blue rose, and they just go, yes, yes. And then they go, oh, I don't really know why I'm saying yes. I know. I don't know why I'm connected to it. I've always, that's always been like my favorite color too. Well, the, I could never, on my website, I could never, my son helped me with my website. And he, poor Sean, just kept trying to adjust the blue. I was like, that's not right. No, that's not right. I never, we never got it right. I could never get it quite what I wanted it to be, but, but it's, I was, it's a rose. <laughs> and it's blue. And, uh, but yeah, but they, she tells me like, I'm trying to remember who else I, it was in that channeling, but Avalon, every time I do the retreat, she tells me different um, other groups that were part of the Blue Rose. But um, but that was how yeah, I found you yeah. because somebody said to me, oh, you're, your energy, you're part of the lineage of the Blue Rose. I said, oh, am I? Uh, What's that then? <laughs> I, didn't, yeah. I didn't know. And that was, I think that was last year. And then I, you know. Yeah. I found you and I thought, yeah. oh, what a lovely energy you have, Mary. Because I can tell just by looking at people on Facebook, I just, you know, it's like, oh, I love your energy or oh. mm, maybe you're not for me, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. quite useful. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm, I'm fascinated, you know, and, and humbled by, I, you know, I, I'm, we're all playing our roles, you know, so I'm asked to share all this information and to, yeah, I, I suppose, yeah, share the information, be the channel for, you know, bring through the, the information and the transmissions. Um, but like, but yet the work you're doing is so beautiful and so powerful, you know, just what you're talking about. And I just think, well, I guess it's just, it's just our connection, you know, like mm. you don't, um, 
you're already doing the work that um, is being activated in the people who are doing you know, the retreats. Um, there's like three levels when I do the Order of the Blue Rose. They, there's that first level. Then the second level is, I do have people who are speaking light language already who are going to do the second levels. But um, they, she does tell me that it's, it's, there's going to be further activation of their um, their light language, their, their, um, the, the sound vibrations that are coming through them. There's going to be more activation. And then there's a third level that we go to either um, France, which I'm, I think I'm going to be doing soon, or um, she has mentioned Scotland or Glastonbury for the, the third level initiation. So, um, so I don't even know what that will be. They tell me and then I go. It's like you, you were saying earlier, <laughs> you know, I just, it's all faith. It's all just trust. And then I just, I get, I, my rational mind comes in and I go, this is crazy. I'm not going to, why am I going to Slovakia when I went to Slovakia? And then I just do it. And then I don't even really understand everything that happens. And then after that, I, a book, I write a book, you know, let's, I'm sure I know it's the same for you. It's, yeah. It's, and, and because, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, there's certain things I want to do and I sort of plan around it, but there's certain things that just come up and then mm -hmm. they're in front of me. So I do them and people say, and I say, oh, you know, I'm doing this huge piece of work and people go, well, you don't have to do it. And I'm like, oh, I do. Because <laughs> <laughs> yes. the energy is like moving through me. I can't just suddenly stop in the middle of it because I'd hate, you know, I dread to think how that would work out like energetically. No, your, just, whole, your whole day you'd be trying to distract yourself from the fact that you should be doing this other thing. <laughs> You know, well, that's how the Magdalene's energy, you know, she's like, oh, you have free will. It's your choice. But she's standing over me until I do whatever it is she wants me to do. <laughs> like, I don't really have free will. Like, That's sort of know. free will up to a certain certain <laughs> yes. extent. I mean, like tomorrow I could turn around and go, that's it. I'm not doing this anymore. Right. But I mean, that's not going to happen. No, no, <laughs> it's not. Because I'm too curious, like what is going to come next. But I mean, going going back to to what were you saying, like like what I do and what you do, we all like specialize in our own way, and mm -hmm. we all bring through different like mm -hmm. pieces of the information, and we all need each other so much. It's we do, and it's and it just to to be able to just have this conversation, and for anyone else who's listening, just to say, oh, I'm not alone. Oh, oh, this yeah. is we're. Yeah, we might even, they might even remember us, <laughs> you know, like yeah. there's that, also that, there's the, the knowing, the remembering that you were together and doing this work, you know, and this is the beautiful part of all of this, that we're able to reconnect across oceans Yeah, and know and, that we're all yeah. doing our part. And that, you know, I love doing this podcast because I get to talk to people who I think are really great and interesting and just just share that with other people like look look at look at all of us it's mm. it's not just you you're not alone you're not mm. because we are a minority we could yes. you know we are a and minority and it can feel so lonely and so mm. outcast and and you're not you're not lonely and outcast we're this you know big circle mm -hmm. absolutely i um and then I created that. I don't know if I talked to you about that. I, the, um, of course, I, this is one of the things that I thought that I was creating myself because I was doing those live broadcasts on Facebook, but I didn't want, I want a little more privacy. I wanted it to be open, but I wanted more privacy. So I created a Facebook group so I could do a channeling and not have somebody scrolling through publicly just seeing me channel. It was, I want to make it more sacred. So I created that. And I called it the lineage of the rose. And um, you know, cause we, cause I was starting to connect with people who are connected, who are doing the same kind of work. And um, from that, all of a sudden um, the blessed mother came in and said, Oh yeah, this is what you're supposed to do. And now we're gathering them and all the, all of the lineage of the rose are coming together. And um, you can, we're doing, you're going to do live transmissions um, for the global healing of the earth. So again, you know, it's the healing of the earth, but it's, um, I don't even know why I started talking about this, but <laughs> something you said, but anyway, um, 
it's one of those where I, I thought it was my idea, but apparently, <laughs> apparently it was, it was there seated and it was just time. Um, and it's, but it's beautiful to be able to connect with all these people. They just keep, I think they just see the lineage of the rose and they're connected to the rose in some way. And, um, they just can join mm. and, uh, I get to meet all these. I don't really get to see them, you know, the way you're seeing me, but I, they'll put something in the chat room or something. Mm. Just tell me their story. So it's, it's wonderful. Mm. And you can feel people's energy. Can't yeah. you? Like I was saying, you know, yeah. on Facebook, it's like, you can, yeah. you can sense who they are and sense who they are. And just, just like, it's like, it's amazing what, what we're doing, the, mm. what people are on their, on, you know, and like you said, on your own, you're, you're doing it on your own learning, opening on our own, you know, and, uh, but it's nice to be able to share too and to, to connect and not feel alone. <laughs> not yeah, feel it is. Yeah. It is. It is. And, you know, I don't, I don't ever, but I can remember like years ago, you know, uh, early on, I did feel like I was kind of a freak and an outcast in the middle of a bunch mm -hmm. of normal mm -hmm. people and who the hell was I, you know, and yeah. it's taken, it's been a long journey, but I definitely don't feel like that anymore. No, I don't. Either. But even when you take, you know, if society and just you know, people who don't, who aren't awake yet, who aren't even aware of energy, the, the things that we do, but then even within the circle of friends or people that I, who do energy work, who do, this is unique in it of itself. So there's like even a smaller circle of um, those of us who are called to, and really called, you know, not by taking a class, but by this inner voice, inner knowing. So it's not like a certificate on our wall. It says, yes, Mary, you are now certified to <laughs> go and, <laughs> you know, I keep waiting for that. I would, I would, Sometimes the ego part of me would like just, you know, certifications. and <laughs> You could go and on I, Canva and make your own one for yourself. Every once in a while, I'll go, she'll place a stamp on my phone. she go, you have my stamp of approval. <laughs> now go and do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, none of us really do need that at all. But, um, but yeah, but even within the alternative healing worlds, you know, we're unique in that. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. So some people say, well, what do you do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hmm. You know, because even within the spiritual world, I'm sort of on the outer periphery. <laughs> so like, right. Right. Uh, choose know, my words. <laughs> when you asked, I used, when you gave me a couple of questions, the things you thought we might talk about, well, I can't remember which one it was, but I just remember thinking, how do you put it into words? Yeah. <laughs> you do. That's it. Yeah. That's it. You just put words on it and, and do your best, don't you? It's like, yeah, 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 absolutely. I know one of the things, I, one of the things I, I put down on there was like, can you give our, our listeners some, some tips on just like how to bring like spirituality into our everyday lives? Mm. Yeah, that's one I was definitely sitting with and, um, for me, it is, I mean, it's, not, it's so simple, but it's, it's just moving into the quiet and it, nothing that has to be formal or, you know, so many of my friends will talk about, um, you know, just different techniques and different <sighs> meditations they might listen to, but it's just so important to be able to sit and be still and be quiet. You know, in nature, even better, because that's the feminine and that's going to ground us. And um, there's so much the earth is here to offer us. So incorporating time in the quiet and time in nature is so important. I, for me, that's every day. I, um, if I have to get up at 5 or 6 a.m., if I know I have a busy day, that's what I'll do to start my day. Um and then, you know, throughout the day, I spend time just listening, mindfulness, listening to my heart. I just am always 
listening. Of course, now I, I'm in communication, but just being aware of when life is pulling me out externally into the busyness. I mean, of course, we're going to go through the day. I have to drive my daughter to school. Um, I have to might have to go food shopping. But I am constantly monitoring whether I'm too attached to the list, to checking it off. I have to do this. I have to do that. Or if I'm just being present, allowing myself to be present and to being in, being in my heart, whatever that, it's, it's not something that I can, it's just an intention that you have to feel to be in and not to be brought out into the world, not to be, to be in the world, but not of it. I suppose maybe that's where that comes from, but you know, just to not be caught up in the attachment to the list of the doing. So for me, that brings everything into center. Mm. And you hear, they hear the voice that says what you might need, you know, that quiet or that um, conversation, this person you might need to call, Mm. you know, a busy mind won't let you hear that. I mean, would you like to, to lead us in something like five minutes or a little channeling from Mary or, you know, whatever feels sure. bright to you, really? Yeah, yeah, I could do that. Let me, uh, let me put my laptop down. So just close your eyes. And bring yourselves into your hearts. And allow Earth Mother Gaia to help you to anchor in connecting with her pulsations. And the Magdalene would like to speak, to share some wisdom. I bestow blessings, my children. I have called to each of you here. Know that I am fully present to you in this moment. That you may gain residency within your hearts that you may know your truth. I would establish within each of you a new heart song. that your voices may carry through the winds of time and space and awaken the heart of humanity. I call to each of you that you may begin again and step forward. Time in the quiet is required.
There is a veil of protection around some. I would lift it from you. That you may know and remember. There is a sandstorm that swirls about you. Much changeover has occurred. It is time now to settle, to rest, to forgive, to let go. Reside within. Allow a gentle movement of the breath. It is all that is required. In doing so, you shall arise. As there is much now that awakens within you. It requires but a moment in the silence. A moment in the knowingness. You overgive yourselves. You must retreat from the masses. Receive me now. I am the Magdalene. And I would establish within each of you a temple of light. The wings of the dove descend now upon you. That in the fullness of grace and of time, a new life may be established within you. And you may walk with gentle hearts to forgive the masses to release them. And to establish upon the earth a grid of light of the feminine structures. of the giving heart, the joyous nature, the passion-filled life, the knowingness.
I call to each of you to receive me. And to know that is through each of you that I speak. Gather yourselves together. And know that I am present. That the heart of divine function may be awakened. So it's complete. The Magdalene calling to each of us, each of you who's hearing her voice, that the time is now to step forward. To step into your work step into your hearts. The time is now. Mm. That was lovely. So Mm. lovely. Thank you. So, Nada, yeah, she had things to say. (laughs) Not exactly answering your question, but um, but yes, for your listeners, right? They're incorporating their spiritual life is is the the work that they're being called to. Yeah. She was saying to me earlier before we started talking that um she say they're segmented. She kept saying we're they're segmented and I was saying to her as well. Sometimes you can feel so segmented just having your different roles and um it's t- I I no longer want not that we ever really wanted it, but I just a full embodiment, a full integration of all that we are in just every aspect of our lives to be who we are and um, you know, to be strong in that mm. is so, so important now. It was just, just beautiful. When, as soon as you called her, here, her in, I felt her on my right shoulder. Oh. And I just sort of put my head on her. Oh, <laughs> it was just lovely. Yeah, it was just lovely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I experience her as very like, um, you know, a, just such a compassionate, nurturing mm. energy. Like when I need to go through emotional stuff, I call in Mary Magdalene, and she holds, she holds the space, she holds me in mm. like a mother would hold a child that was crying, you know, and. <laughs> It's just beautiful. It's just... She's so compassionate. And yet so, um, th- just the, her wisdom, I, I feel her wisdom when she's, you know, like the, the, the wise um, sage, you know, the woman, and like the best friend that will just tell you the truth yeah. as it is and just say, listen, you know, offer you the compassion and the comfort and then say, enough with this one or whoever maybe is draining you or you just have to be, you know, strong in this and, and stand, stand tall, stand tall. That's stand tall, stand strong, know your value, your worth. But uh, she's so loving. And uh, yeah, yeah. 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 So that sort of feels like um, we've done a good job all the things we've talked about and that beautiful channel in there. Is there any last things you want to, we didn't get to talk about your book. 
Perhaps we have to perhaps yeah. we have to have another <laughs> another talk. Another talk sometime. Yeah. Well, um you know what's imp- what the, the book is really it's a call, it's not written for everyone. It's written for your listeners, it's written for the people who are being called. Um so when she first told me that, uh I thought, oh, how am I going to get it to them? But, you know, of course, they're being, they, you just intuitively, you're just feeling the call because the book is the light transmission. So it's not really. That's exactly important. how I felt when I was reading it. It's yeah. like, it's not even the words. It's the energy that's that's coming through it. It's just beautiful energy yeah. coming through. Yeah, it's the energy. It's, yeah. um, it's what you're receiving. And um, so there's the story and you can, you know, it can cont- contradict one person's story and another person. You know, there's so many stories out there, but um, it's what's more important is it's it's a light transmission and it's calling. Um, it's part of the, the calling, the waking up for all of us that um, it's time, it's time, it's time. So, but it's you know it's out out, out there on Amazon and um, it it tells her story of you know her growing up years and just her importance in the story of Yeshua and the importance of the divine feminine and his acknowledgement of that importance. And um, yeah, so yeah, but we could talk about it another time too. But um, I did want to say that I am, I spoke about that lineage of the rose. I do have on May 15th, I'm going to do another global healing meditation. It's being led by the divine mother, the blessed mother on May 15th at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But then I am also doing, um, and I believe it was anticipation of this podcast, (laughs) the Magdalene asked me to schedule a new, she calls it a seed planting ceremony, Um, but it's a a blue, I call it the Blue Rose Transmission, and that's June 5th. It's a, again, a Saturday. It's at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So um, in that It'll be a full hour long transmission of um, the Magdalene's energies, the divine feminine, an embodiment of uh, that structural template and a call to moving forward into the work, the earth grid work that we're being called to do in our different varying roles. And what's the best way for people to find it? Is it on your website? Is it on Facebook? And so both of them are on on my website. Uh, www.bluerosehealing.com under events um, and then I also have a Facebook page Blue Rose mm. Healing as well and it's mm. it's posted there but um, I'll put I'll put all the like links in the show notes so that people can see them there okay yeah okay yeah so um, yeah well, it's been really it's really lovely talking to you today mary yeah it's been wonderful speaking to you i just feel like i have a new friend who (laughs) it's funny i i was just thinking that not really anticipating this but just thinking like who do i have to talk to about it it's just nice to have one more person to so i can just share and you know things that just happen it is and it's real joy isn't it it's just such Mm. a joy i know yeah 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 I know really blessings is. to the internet and yeah Zoom and yeah. Anchor FM that I they make it so easy to publish a podcast on there and yes. all of these things. I'm just incredibly, yeah. incredibly grateful. I have to ask you, um, where where are you in Denmark? My friend, I she's from Denmark. I can't remember where she's from. So I'm on the island of Shayland, and that is okay. where Copenhagen is. Okay. And we're 20 kilometers outside of Copenhagen in a town that's quite large by Danish standards, okay. <laughs> but not other people's standards, called Roskilde. Roskilde. Yeah, and Kila um, is the Danish word for springs. This was the original um, sort of foundation of Christianity in Denmark, where we are. Oh. Well, Jim, when you start talking about the springs, I was like, oh, I think I want to go there. Yeah, I think you should <laughs> I love, come. I love There's a Magdalene the spring. spring. <laughs> yeah. There's oh all sorts of really special power places around here. And like I said, it's just opening up. It's just starting. Mm. You know, it's like the snowdrops in the spring. It's just sort of 
just starting to blossom now yeah. and I think I'm going to be working with it a lot more this year but I just wanted to mention to you just because it's come up for me this week I'm doing another podcast later but where I'm getting interviewed with Lee Chapin she she's a channel for Yeshua and Mary Magdalene she's mm. written is it Divine Union or I can't, oh. I'm not very good at remembering I have a book I, I haven't read it but it's called Divine Union it could be uh, I'm really sorry if Lee's listening that I can't remember the name of your book, but it's just, I have a bad, really bad memory. But um, I'm talking to her tonight and, and she said, oh, give me the talking points. And I was like, oh, I better think of some talking points. And I sat down and I started getting stuff about um, Saint Marie, Santa Marie de la Mer. You know, the place in France, it's in the Comar. <laughs> I haven't been there. I have been to a lot of places in France because my parents were just like loved going to France. Mm. And I've been to um, Rennes Chateau a couple of times and would like to have gone a lot more. I love it. I love it there. Mm. But that was just coming through so strongly. So I'm going to be talking about that tonight. And it just, I don't know why, I just want to mention it. it just, I was reading um, that you know, because St. Sarah is a Languedoc saint along with Mary Magdalene. I was reading that. There has been a sacred site there from prehistoric times, and there's been goddess temples there. And mm -hmm. who's the who's the bull god? Minor, my, my oh oh know, the, the bull. One. Yeah, he was quite really big in northern France, and I guess that southern sort of around that part of France is. Mm. Oh, I can't remember, but him as well. And but I mean, it's just yeah. like. Ooh, ooh, I'm getting a whole thing, and now you know Saint Saint Sarah's down in that in that crypt in the church, and yeah, ooh, yeah, yeah, the whole the, thing, the yeah. whole ancient. I know, um, you know, yeah, just what you're talking about the prehistoric uh, ancient stuff. When I, I went to France, and um, you know, just on a, a anniversary trip, but um, yeah. It, I mean, of course, like the sacred sites where Mary Magdalene was, but just the ancient, ancient, ancient history. You know, even, even Notre Dame being built right on uh, the sacred site to Isis and all of the, like, the ancient um, temple structures, sacred sites, springs, right? Yeah. Just like, yeah, it's all, it's, um, it's fascinating to me. And anything you get, let me know. <laughs> Yeah, I, will. I would love to hear it because I I am supposed to lead it, bring a group there, and I just trying. I'm not. She hasn't told me quite. I have ideas where I want to go, but I'm not sure. Maybe that's one of the areas we'll go to. I don't know. I just really wanted to tell you, and I don't know where it's because I'm just feeling this buzz, and I'm going to be talking about it tonight. But well, that's where like she arrives, right? You. That's where she comes in, isn't it? It the is. Mayor? Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's okay. the story. Mary Magdalene lands there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the boat. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there's something really significant about that, isn't there? That arrival, that coming in. Well, I know, as I'm saying it, yeah. You know, and, and I can't even, it's probably really obvious to everybody else, but I can't even say what that is. I can just feel like it. Mm -hmm. And I was reading through the legend the other day, and I can just feel like there's this whole metaphor and meaning to it that I haven't grasped yet. So maybe yeah. it'll come later. We'll see. It reminds me of when I do the retreats, uh, I write about Aphrodite. Aphrodite means, you know, co um, coming in on the foam or the, the f arriving on the foam. She arrives on the foam or just reminds mm. me of that um, definition of Aphrodite, which is Venus. And I don't know, all yeah. of that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find well. out. I'll Sometimes listen. it takes years, but I usually get little clues and stuff in the end that, you know. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And then you wonder, why does it have to happen like that? Can't you just know all at once? <laughs> but it's fun. It's the mystery. That's it. They're, that's it. They're keeping me interested. Yes. <laughs> make sure keep, I keep working. <laughs> that's right. Keep, make, keep exploring. Keep, yeah, keep looking because it brings you in all these other areas, directions too. That's beautiful. Oh. Oh, well, I'll have to listen. And I do have that book. My friend gave it to me and maybe it's time to read it. Yeah. So, yeah. well, thank you so much. <sighs> You're welcome. So that's it for today, folks. Bye-bye. We'll see you again. See you another time.